Lesson 5, I will model the equivalence of tenths and hundredths using the area model and number disk. In Lesson 5, we were introduced to hundredths, and we learned that ten hundredths was equal to one-tenth. If I had ten hundredths, that was the same as one-tenth, or ten hundredths was equal to one-tenth. Because tenths are larger in fractions than hundredths, it's the same way in decimals. They are larger in decimals as well. Okay, let's take a look at your Lesson 5 template. Now you're going to notice that we have two area models here. Take a look at the first area model. This represents one whole, and look at how many parts it's been divided into. It's been divided into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then if you look at this other area model, you can see that we have, you can still see the 10, but these tenths have been divided into 10 parts. So how many parts do you think are in this total? Well, if you were to count, you would count 100. So we're going to talk about equivalence in these decimals, the same, that we talked, the same way that we talked about equivalence in fractions. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to shade 1 tenth on your first area model. So we have one tenth. And then I want you to come over and I want you to shade the same amount in the hundredths model. Alright, so let's talk about this for just a second. How would you write what you shaded here as a fraction? Well, you shade it one out of ten. How would you write what you shaded here as a fraction? Well, you shade it ten out of a hundred. What do you know about both of these? These are equivalent. These are equivalent. Now as a decimal you would write this zero and one-tenth and as a decimal you would write this ten one-hundredths. Okay let's take a look at the area models that you have right below those and let's talk for just a minute. What if instead of having one tenth, what if you had three tenths? Let's shade three tenths. How many hundredths would be equivalent to three tenths? Well, let's shade and find out. So let's shade the same amount of space. So let's shade three over, over just like we did in the first one. Okay, do you see how both of these have the same amount of shaded? All right, now let's talk about this as a fraction. So as a fraction, we just shade it 3 out of 10. Over here, we just shade it what? 30 out of 100. But these are equivalent. 3 tenths is equal to 30 hundredths. As a decimal, we would write 3 tenths like this. As a decimal, we would write 30 hundredths like this. So here's what we just learned. We just learned that 3 tenths is equal to 30 hundredths and that makes sense doesn't it? You could multiply the numerator and the denominator by 10. We also just learned that 3 tenths is equal to 30 hundredths. That seems kind of weird because this looks like 3 is equal to 30. So you've got to kind of think a little bit differently when you're thinking about decimals. When you start adding these zeros after this, they don't have very much value because these are in fact equal. All right, let's go ahead and look at our problem set and let's talk a little bit about equivalency with fractions and compare that to decimals. All right, so it says find the equivalent fraction using multiplication or division. Shade the area models to show the equivalency recorded as a decimal. All right, so let's start by shading our model. So we have three tenths. We just did this, didn't we? All right, so let's shade three tenths in our first model, and then let's see how many hundredths are equal to three tenths. I bet you already know because we just did this, right? All right, so three tenths is going to be equal to how many hundredths? Well, 10, 20, 30. So what did we multiply, oops, what did we multiply our numerator and our denominator by to get to 30 and to 100? We multiply them both by 10. 
Now it says recorded as a decimal. So as a decimal, this would be 0 0.30 or 3 tenths or 30 hundredths. Okay, so let's do 50 out of 100. Okay, so 50, so that would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So let's come over here and show you the same amount. So I've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, now let's write, fill in. So I had 50. How can I get from 50 to 10? Notice we're not multiplying. We are dividing. What do I have to divide 100 by to get to 10? Well, I have to divide it by 10 because 10 times 10 is 100. So 100 divided by 10 is 10. And whatever I do to my denominator, I have to do to the numerator. So 50 divided by 10 equals 5. And how do I write 5 tenths? 0 0.5. All right, let's take a look at this one. Complete the number sentences. Shade the equivalent amount on the area model, drawing horizontal lines to make hundredths. So we've got 37 hundredths. Okay, so how many tenths are there? How many tens are there in 37? Well, that would be 3 tenths. And how many hundredths would that be? That would be 7 hundredths. So in fraction form, that would be 37 hundredths. In decimal form, that would be 37 hundredths. So it says we have to draw horizontal lines to make hundredths. So how many horizontal lines would we have to draw? Well, we would have to draw 10, right? So let's, let's take, okay, so I'm going to use my line tool here, and I'm going to draw 10 horizontal lines, maybe. All right, so let's try this. Okay, so we've got, now I've divided into half, so let's divide this into 10 equal parts. I want you to be doing this to yours as well. Okay, so that is, oops, these aren't exactly spaced apart correctly, forgive me. All right, so that's one, two, three, four, five on that side. So now I've got to do four lines on this side so that I have a total of 10. Oh, these are looking a lot better, getting better. Spoke too soon. Well, that really looks messy. Okay, so let me fix this one. Okay, so we have to shade 37. Okay, so we've got to shade how many tenths? Three tenths, right? So let's go up here and let's get the highlighter tool. And we're going to shade three full. So this is 10, 20, 30. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's 37 hundredths. Three tenths and seven hundredths. Okay, all right, let's try the next one. If you think you can do the next one all by yourself, go ahead and pause the video and try. Do your best. If you get stuck, you can always press play. All right, so let's take a look here. So we have seven tenths and how many hundredths? Five, right? Seventy-five. So in fraction form, that's seventy-five hundredths. In decimal form, that is seventy-five hundredths. Okay, so now we're going to decompose these tenths into hundredths. So we're going to come through here and we're going to make, break each of these ones down into ten parts. So now we're going to have ten tens, which makes a hundred. Hopefully you already did this to yours and you're ready to start shading. Okay, so when I get finished, I'm going to go back and count and see if I have ten. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Good. Okay, so now I'm going to shade 7 tenths. So that means I'm going to shade 7 boxes completely. So that's 5, 6, 7. So here's my 70. And then I have to shade 5 hundredths. So I'm going to start at the bottom this time and shade 5 over. Okay, so I've got 7 tenths and 5 hundredths, which is 75 hundredths. Okay, now we're going to talk about using some some number disk here to use to represent hundredths and tenths. Look at the hundredths. They say 0 0.01. Circle hundredths to compose as many tenths as you can. How many hundredths does it take to make a tenth? 
Well, it takes 10. So instead of 10 hundredths, I can say I have 1 tenth here. So how many hundredths did I start out with? 10, 11, 12. I had 12 hundredths. I'm going to decompose these 10 and replace those with a 10. So now I've got 1 tenth and 2 hundredths. And then look at how we represented that as a number bond. 12 hundredths is the same as 1 tenth and 2 hundredths. Okay, let's try one more. Okay, so how many hundredths do we have? 10, 20, 25, 26, 27. So we had 27 hundredths. So let's compose groups of 10. So here's a group of 10. That can be 1 tenth. Here's a group of 10. That can be 1 tenth. So now I've got 2 tenths and 7 hundredths. So as a number bond, I've got 27 hundredths. And I'm going to divide that into 2 tenths and 7 hundredths. Together, that makes 27 hundredths. All right, use both tenths and hundredths number disks to represent each number. Write the equivalent number in decimal, fraction, and unit form. Okay, so we have fraction form right here. 3 tenths, so we can check off fraction. All right, let's write this as a decimal. So 3 hundredths looks like this, 0 0.03. So how many hundredths is that? 3. So here's your unit form, 3 hundredths. So now I have to use tenths and hundredths number dicks to represent the number. Well, I don't have any tenths. I only have hundredths. So I'm going to draw 1, 2, 3 hundredth disc. So make sure it says 0 0.01, 0 0.01. If you just put 0 0.1, you're drawing tenths. Okay, so we have fraction form. Let's write this as a decimal. 15 hundredths is written 15 hundredths. That is 1 tenth and 5 hundredths. So let's represent that with number disk. Here's my 1 tenth. There's 1 tenth, and now I'm going to draw 5 hundredths. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So let's make these into hundredths. 0 0.01. 1 hundredth. 1 hundredth. It almost looks like I'm trying to write 100 backwards, doesn't it? 1 hundredth. Okay, let's go down here a little bit. All right, so if you feel like you can try one of these by yourself, go ahead. I'd like to see what you can do all by yourself. This time they give you the decimal. See if you can write the fraction. Finish the number form, or the unit form, and then go ahead and write this and put your number disk, okay? All right, so we've got 72 hundredths, okay? So that will be the same thing as 2 hundredths. I'm going to kind of write this backwards because I didn't really leave me room for 7 tenths, but this should be 7 tenths and 2 hundredths. So I'm going to make 7 tenths, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So these are tenths. 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. These are all one tenth. And then I'm going to make two hundredths. Okay, so let's do two hundredths. Don't forget your decimal. That really does have a decimal in there, even though it's kind of hard to see. So this is going to be 0 0.01, 0 0.01. Okay, last one. If you haven't tried anything by yourself, I want you to try to do as much of this one by yourself as you can and see what you can come up with. All right, so I have 80 hundredths. How many tenths do I have? Well, I have 8 tenths and 0 hundredths. I don't have to put the 0 hundredths. If you did, that's okay, but you don't have to. So I'm going to make 8 tenths. 8 tenths is the same as 80 hundredths. Just like 8 dimes is the same thing as 80 pennies. So let's make 8 tenths. Eight tenths. Okay? Alright, we got two more here. So if you I'd like for you to try to do both of these by yourself. 
and then come back and check. So go ahead and pause the video and then come back. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and you tried to do this by yourself. So let's take a look here. So I've got seven tenths and two hundredths. That is 72 hundredths. Written in decimal form would be 72 hundredths. And here's my seven tenths and here's my two hundredths. So again, I want you to pause the video and I want you to try to do F all by yourself. Okay, so let's take a look at F. So I have 80 hundredths, which is the same thing as 80 hundredths. Now I hope that you didn't draw 80 of these. I hope that you recognize that there's an eight in the tenths place, so you could do eight tenths. Then I want you to stop and think to yourself, why do you think they had F and then look at D? Why do you think they had you do eight tenths and then they had you do 80 hundredths. I think they were trying to get you to realize something. I think they wanted you to recognize that 8 tenths is equivalent to 80 hundredths as a fraction and as a decimal. These are equivalent. Just like 80 pennies is equivalent to 8 dimes. You have the same value you still have 80 cents. Here you still have 80 hundredths, whether you have 8 tenths or 80 hundredths. Okay, so today we worked on the equivalence of tenths and hundredths, and we will continue to work on this in the next lesson as well.